What's going on, bud? Me and Moby hanging out in the shop tonight, getting a little work done on a new project. So we got this 1970 Roadrunner here in the shop from a customer of mine. And uh, it's run like garbage ever since he put it together about 10 years ago. It's only got 300 miles on it since a rotisserie restoration, despite being built for quite a number of years. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go through it, make it a little bit better to drive, give it a tune up, uh, adjust some things here and there. The seats sit really low in it, so might bring them up a little bit to see better because these are out of like a Cuda or a Challenger. And this is the B-body satellite platform, so they sit too low in there. It's got a 440 with a 727, uh, all QA1 suspension, and uh, it just has never run right. So we're gonna give it a tune-up, and we're also gonna be replacing the heads and maybe possibly putting fuel injection on this car. So. I'm about to tear into this thing. I've already found some problems with the distributor. The centrifugal advance isn't working very well and it doesn't have the vacuum advance hooked up at all. So we're gonna address some things with the timing. But for now, I think I'm actually just gonna pull it apart and put the new cylinder heads on because he wants aluminum heads on it, a little bit more compression. I'm gonna tear into it, see what I can find. Here we go. Well, there you go. Got the old cylinder heads off the engine and out of the way. Now we have room to clean this up in here. So got to clean up the surface of the block as well as the flange on the header. Um, had to remove the exhaust collector bolts underneath and separate the exhaust from the headers as well to make room to get to those bottom bolts for the heads. So now that those are off, I can clean up the surface, make it all nice and ready for the new heads. And as you can see, based on these spark plugs, this thing was running like garbage. I mean, look how fouled out and carboned up that plug is. For an engine that only has 300 miles on it, it definitely needed some attention. So the heads are gonna help, but ultimately I think I'm gonna have to do some work on the carburetor, which is there in the back of the El Camino, to get this thing running right because it's pig rich and fouling plug. Anyway, now it's on to getting this ready for the new heads to go on. And here is the jewelry that is replacing the junk stock heads. This is a Edelbrock RPM, part number 60929, the 84 cc combustion chamber cylinder heads. They make one with a slightly smaller combustion chamber. You can get them down to 75 cc's, but uh, we're doing 84 and uh, that's about 11 cc's smaller than factory. I think factory is 95 cc's, so we'll get a slight bump in compression and it should fix all the worn out valve seals and everything as well as just weighing a ton less and flowing more air. So got this thing out of the box. It's ready to bolt on as soon as you pull it out of the box. Obviously you wanna inspect it, just make sure there's not anything obvious going on. But yeah, that's ready to go. We're gonna be using a Felpro cylinder head gasket, part number 1009, just a basic gasket. Unfortunately, I only ordered one, so I can only do one side tonight, but that's okay. I went ahead and sprayed it with some copper spray gasket. I like to do that on cylinder heads just to guarantee a good seal. So it's here on the block ready to receive the new cylinder head. So I'm gonna go grab it and drop it on here real quick and start running in some bolts. And uh, then I'll probably wait till I get the other side in to torque everything. That way I do it all at once and don't forget anything, but there we go. Make it progress as a train goes by outside. It makes a whole bunch of noise. These are awfully pretty though. Right, Mobs? What you think? Boop. Yep. These are way nicer than stock. So I'm just gonna drop these down in here. You wanna set them into place without really shifting them around. Let's see how good we can do it. I think the exhaust is slightly in my way, so let me move that. I'll be right back. All right. I need to do it in this. There we 
we go. That should be plenty of clearance now. Let me go grab these heads again. All right, take two. Let's see if we can get these in here a little better. My dipstick tube is in the way. So, third time's a charm, right? Dipstick tube. Doesn't seem to want to move either. I'm gonna bend it down just a little bit. All right, let's try this again. All right, take three. There we go. Dropped right into place. Just needed a little adjustment. So now I need to get my bolts, start dropping them in there. This side will be good to go. So instead of the factory bolts, we're gonna be using this kit from ARP. So it replaces the factory bolts with a nice ARP, really strong fastener, allows you to get some better clamping force. And they send it with their fastener assembly lubricant, which is good for getting the proper torque. We're gonna to put some of this on each bolt and drop them into place and uh, put the washers on beforehand, obviously. Uh, they have a taper to them, so the taper side goes towards the bolt head if you're ever putting ARP hardware in. So I'm gonna get these all dropped in and uh, then just let it sit there and wait for my other head gasket to show up because I got it ordered and I'm just waiting on it to show up. It's another day here in the shop. We've been making some progress on the Roadrunner. Got the other head on now that I got the other head gasket. They've both been torqued down, so now I get to put the headers back on with our new Remflex gaskets, put the manifold back on with the carburetor, go ahead and drop the distributor back in, hook up all the spark plug wires, and time this sucker and get it running, and dial in the carburetor and stuff to make sure it's working good. What you think, Mobes? Are we doing a good job? The supervisor happy? He seems happy. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get to work on this thing, uh, putting all the exhaust back on, and then getting all of the parts that are here in the bed of the El Camino back on this thing. Got our rocker arms and everything to put on. I'll have to verify my pushrod length, valve covers, intake manifold, alternator, all that good stuff. So here we go, let's make it happen. So I'm a big believer in these Remflex gaskets here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that down in there. They're way thicker than a traditional gasket. I've never actually had a set of these fail, so I'm gonna be using them on here. And one thing that's very important to note on these as well is that the exhaust manifold bolts actually go into the water jacket on this motor. So you need to put some RTV on them or you'll have coolant leaks around all those bolts. So we're gonna get these tossed on with the bolts and some RTV and we'll be good to go. There we go, got one side done. All the header bolts are tight. Now all I gotta do is put the spark plugs in, valve train back on, and then move on to the rest of the motor. And have a Fig Newton because those are always delicious. Sure is a dangerous sponsor, but I do love Fig Newtons. And boom, both headers are now on. Now it's time to move on to setting up the valve train on this thing. Then after we get the valve train set up, we can put the intake manifold back on, time this thing, and then get spark plugs in it and wires and all that stuff and be ready to go. Right, bud? There you go, boy. So I was reading up on the instructions on this thing before putting the valve train together and I found out these are actually blind holes for the exhaust manifolds on the Edelbrock cylinder heads. The stock heads go into the water jacket, the Edelbrock heads do not, so the RTV is unnecessary, but I did it anyway because I didn't know that, and it's not gonna hurt anything. So working on getting the rocker shaft assembly on this side, and then I'll show you how to do it on the other side because I'm teaching myself on this side. It comes with these studs, and uh, I'll show you how those work before I put this side together. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this side tightened down, then move on to the driver's side. One of the nice things about these heads is that you can actually reuse the factory rocker shaft assembly and they actually send these two studs 
that go into the Edelbrock head that allow you to drop the thing on there really nicely. I will say having an adjustable rocker arm assembly would be pretty nice because then you don't have to get a custom length push rod. Although these are the stock length push rods. And as you can tell, we're pretty much at zero lash. See, there's no movement up and down on this rocker arm, but I can move it back and forth. And that tells me we're pretty much at zero lash with some preload. This should just work with the stock length push rods that were in this thing. Here's how you set this up. They come with two of these studs, a washer, and two of these fine thread nuts. And I believe these are from ARP. Yeah, it says ARP on it. And all you do is take it and thread the coarse end into the second and fourth rocker arm shaft pedestals on the head. So as you can see, I already got this one in and this one in. And then it has a little Allen key on the end of it. I believe it's a 964 and you just take that Allen wrench and tighten these suckers down till they bottom out. And then those are in the head ready to accept your rocker shaft assembly. Pretty simple and a really nice feature on these things. Next, we're gonna take all of the push rods we pulled out of this thing and drop them down into place. So they're actually sitting in the cup of the lifter down there and they'll allow us to get that step out of the way before we put our rocker shaft assemblies on this motor. Pretty simple, straightforward, nothing too complicated going on here. This is a big upgrade for this engine over these stock heads. There you go, just like that. All the push rods are in. Now we're gonna come in with the rocker shaft assembly and get that sucker bolted down. So these can be a little tricky to get lined up because there's so many moving pieces. Once you get them in place, they kind of just drop right in. Come on, there we go. But once you get them lined up, they kind of just drop right in and uh, go where they're supposed to. So we gotta get all these Rocker arms actually flipped around so that the little cup is resting on the push rod and the other end is resting on top of each valve. So let me do that real quick and then I'll show you the next step. So one very important part is that you need to take these kind of rounded, did, did. So one very important part you will need uh, off the old bolts that go where the studs are are these kind of ovaled rocker arm hold downs that go in between the rocker arm shafts and keep everything from moving around too much. So those go on. Then you just take this washer, put it there, and then come back on top of it with this fine thread nut and that's good to go. So then you'll get all the push rods up in their cup and torque all of these bolts to 25 foot pounds. That's it, assembled. Another thing that's pretty unique to the big block Mopar and Mopars in general is they don't have a valley cover or an intake manifold that also doubles as a valley cover. They have this intake manifold gasket that also serves as the valley pan. Pretty unique. I have gasket cinched a couple intake manifold gaskets on either side of this so I won't have to use a bunch of RTV on the cylinder heads and uh, that'll just go into place. I went ahead and RTV'd the front and back of the block with a little extra in the corners. And now we're gonna set this thing on there and bolt it down with these two little pieces of steel that go here and here. And then we'll be putting the entire intake manifold on top of that. I'm gonna cut to the time lapse and make that happen. Bam! Now we got the intake and carb back on. I hooked up the throttle and transmission kick down linkage. Uh, I still have to obviously put the spark plugs in, get the valve covers on, put the distributor back in, time the thing, 
and uh, fill it up with coolant, but it should be pretty much good to go. So all the rockers are acting how they should. I have no problems with anything I'm seeing. Obviously, once this is all buttoned up, I'll get under the car and put the exhaust back together because I had to take it apart to be able to move the headers out of the way. But it's getting there. A little bit at a time over here. I gotta say, working on nice clean cars is pretty wonderful because this thing is pristine and uh, you don't really get that dirty working on it. Spoiling me. Kind of digging our new workbench. It's pretty nice. Um, but I got some Champion R... C12YC spark plugs is what Edelbrock recommends to run in their head. Um, so I'm gonna make sure the gap is good on all of these. They all look pretty good, but I'm gonna double check them with a feeler gauge. Put some anises on the threads, considering it is steel into aluminum. And then these are gonna go into that motor. And we're gonna put all the spark plug wires back on, make sure everything's good to go. Put the alternator back on, connect up the exhaust, and we'll be good to go. Making some progress, it's starting to look like an engine again. I went ahead and tossed the valve covers on the engine because I'm running into a slight problem over here. You see that shiny bit uh, right there on the head? Well, when I put the distributor in its hole, it was interfering with the head. So what I'm gonna do is make a little bit of a mess in here. I got the valve covers on so I don't get any metal in the engine. I've got a towel in the distributor hole and I'm basically just gonna clearance this little section where the Sharpie is so that I have room for that distributor to drop down in there because these Edelbrock heads are a little bigger and therefore the distributor was hitting it. So I'm gonna break out the old flap wheel and uh, do a little clearancing. A little sketchy, not something I exactly wanna do, but you gotta do what you gotta do to make parts fit. Well, that was fun. I got aluminum dust everywhere. Cleaned it up as best I could with the vacuum. I'll come back and wipe everything down. But as you can see, got a little clearance there on the head now. So hopefully the distributor will slide right in. We're about to find out because I'm really hoping that worked because that was not fun. Well, let's find out how we did. Get that towel out of the way and see if we can get this in the right spot. Put our little gasket down in there. Point this in the correct direction. Oh, I think we're going to be in business. It just went right down where it's supposed to go. It's definitely still tight, but it does fit. There you go. As you can see, the distributor is in. I can adjust the timing back and forth now. I couldn't do that before because it was jammed up against the cylinder head. So one problem averted. And uh, I'm going to come back to this tomorrow because... It's like 11 o'clock at night and I just don't feel like working on it anymore and I need to edit another episode of YouTube. So that's gonna be it for now. We made big progress on this thing today, but there's just a little bit left to do to dial this thing in and get it running and back to the owner. Good night, y'all. I'll see you tomorrow. It's another day here in the shop and basically what I've got left to do on the Roadrunner is to run all the spark plug wires, hook all the wiring back up, put coolant in it, and put the air cleaner back on and hook up the vacuum lines and all that stuff and then fire it up and time it and take it for a test drive and it should be good to go. So I'm gonna get on that real quick and I will show you when the engine has its spark plug wires on it and all the wiring and everything hooked back up just like this. Boom, there you go. Got all the spark plug wires run and nicely organized. Breather back on, PCV hooked up, a new fuel line run, put the air cleaner on the thing, hooked up all the wiring for the alternator. The alternator is back on and tight. Now all I need to do is uh, top off the coolant, hook up the exhaust underneath the car, and put the dipstick tube back in this thing. So should be having this thing running here shortly. And next time you see me, we'll be about to hit the key and fire this old girl up. Well, there you go. Everything is put back together. Got the dipstick back in, exhaust is back tight, coolant's filled up. I got my timing light ready to go, hook to plug wire number one. All right, so I got you guys set up in a nice spot and I'm gonna jump in the car and hit the key. It's gonna take a second to get some fuel up to the carburetor. So 
We'll see. Maybe it'll fire right up. I don't know. Yet to be determined. So the real test now that this thing is running is to get in here and see how easy it refires. So without even touching the gas, I'm gonna try to start it. Oh, might need a little uh, idle. It's gonna run, but I think I need to work the throttle. So let me open up this door, get my foot in here and hit the key again. There we go. So, not quite perfect yet, but we're pretty close. Sounded pretty healthy. Let's turn the lights on. Yep, looks good with the quad headlights. I still need to dial this thing in, but we're about, 15 degrees before top dead center right there so that's uh, about right i'm gonna check the total timing by revving it up here in a second and then uh we'll know how how good we're doing Take this thing for a test drive, dial it into perfection, and then uh, give it back to the owner. That's a win. So it is officially another day over here in the shop, and uh, it's a much nicer day outside, not raining. So I can actually get the Roadrunner out and test drive it. This car doesn't get to see rain ever, so I'm not gonna be the one to put it in the rain. We're gonna enjoy this nice January day here in Georgia. Gonna move the Javelin out of the way so I can get the Roadrunner out and then uh, see how we did. Make sure it runs good and then deliver it to the owner. So let's get this moved over here and go for a little test drive. So now that 
the javelin's out of the way, I'm going to fire this thing out, verify the timing one more time, actually tighten down the uh, hold down for the distributor, and then we're going to go for a test drive and see how it does. running way better we've gotten that backfiring issue taken care of it's got a brand new set of cylinder heads cleaned up the wiring made it a lot nicer under the hood tuned up the carburetor a little bit and uh, I guess we'll have to put a heater core on it in the near future but for now she's good to drive so thanks for watching please remember to hit that subscribe button it helps us a lot more than you know so go hit it right now it means a lot to me thank you again for watching I always appreciate anybody who takes the time to watch these videos Hit the like button, 
Go tell us what you liked about it in the comments. Tell us what you didn't like and what you want to see in the future. And we'll see you guys on the next one.